An amateur of some trades, but a master of none. All right, hey YouTube. So we got a really, really cool uh, project today uh, on the Toyota Corolla. We had a fun, fun instance today of noticing that there was a quite a bit of steam, which I thought was smoke coming out of the car. Turns out it's a radiator. So uh, the, the, the fun project is it, it's not a big enough disaster to put the nail in the coffin for the Toyota, but it is gonna be kind of a fun project. If you'll notice here, I uh, was able to get to an auto parts store and get some uh, epoxy bondo super uh, paste play clay putty putty funny word but I put it on there and actually held just fine I let it cure for three hours before I drove it home but it worked out I'm gonna show you that mm. that is the job I did there was a crack here and then uh, the crack extended because uh, this is plastic so there it goes um, but even though this thing held pretty good I am going to replace the radiator even though I am NOT a mechanic so the first step loosened up right there in the very center of the screen the drain for the radiator with the radiator still draining all of its contents it really does look like something nasty happened in that engine look at that look at that it's just nasty but uh, let's check this out I have removed three out of the four fan uh, mounting bolts for the electric fan on the back of the radiator I'm going to remove the last one I've also removed the uh, the reservoir hose so far and the main the top radiator hose and we're still dripping goop down at the bottom of the old busted radiator so we're going to remove this fan and we'll see what happened I also disconnected right here it's terrible lighting I'm a bad filmmaker there's a wire that goes into a small harness or a clip right there I pulled that off too. So we're gonna get this fan out and see what we can see. The last bolt holding that fan on. But I couldn't reach it from the top. So I have to come down here anyway to do some things. I had to remove the plastic shield from this area. And the last, mm. all right. Crawling on my belly. The last one of these bolts. Uh, I saved this for you guys. The two of you who watch my videos. I saved the last fan bolt. Just gotta get pop losing. There's like about 7,000 of those bolts. Those are 10 millimeter that held that thing on and I got to do the same thing on the other side because I do have the transmission fluid uh, connections to the radiator so I got to take those off and I'll probably drip a whole bunch of transmission fluid everywhere but there the fan should now be uh, ready to lift out I disconnected one more clip that holds power on to the fan and we're ready to to pull it out and I'm leaving I'm not disconnecting uh, where the wire connects because that's just an, an extra thing I can probably break but there's oh man all the miles that thing has has protected me or whatever uh, blown air around my my deal we're gonna stick it over here uh, we may need to disconnect that power, or uh, well, we should probably have already disconnected the negative battery terminal. Uh, you know, if you're going to uh, wash the windshield of a car, the first thing you do is disconnect the negative battery terminal. But, uh, man, it's looking good. I may just replace the engine while we're here. I also took the reservoir off. That's kind of a given. 
Uh, this is not a how-to, by the way. This is more of a, uh, I'm suffering through this, and I'd like some people to suffer through it with me. All right, I took the other side off. Uh, this is the bigger, more obnoxious piece, but it was easier to take off. This other one, that's gonna be the one that's gonna uh, cause me to have a little more fun than I deserve on the way back in. So anyway, uh, I've got now a nice open space to get at the connections. All right, this is a truly exciting part. I took one of the oil cooling lines and uh, took it off the radiator, plugged it with a ballpoint pen, keep it from dripping. And then I got this other one. I already moved the clip back. And so, see if I can do some video magic where to get the to get the hose back rather than doing any twisting I'll just take the small channel locks on either side of the pipe and just push back gently until it almost comes off and I've already arranged I stole this child's paintbrush I didn't have a second ballpoint pen actually all the pens I had were really nice a bucket under here to catch any oil that drips Ooh, and it looks terrible. Mm. I'm gonna stick that paint all up in there. See that? Stuck that paintbrush. And now I've got two stable uh, plugged to keep them clean and to keep all the oil from coming out. The radiator is, is now disconnected. Actually, except for I got big guy hose here. So while I'm down here, while the video is rolling. Uh, am I getting oil? What is that? I don't know what's dripping. Oh, it's dripping out of the radiator. That's what's going on. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, transmission's gonna be a whole different... disappointment another different disappointment as far as the video goes but I'm gonna feel how close that that hose is for that radiator I feel it I feel it man I feel it hi man oh you gotta go be that one okay now oh wow that's a tight one isn't it mm. yeah okay here it comes I got the radiator hose loose and bloop it pukes all of its. Bleah. Oh, I man, that's all the nice stuff I put in there earlier today. The other stuff I put in there is nasty. So I don't know. I have to say it's kind of. Ew. Gosh, dude, isn't that isn't kind of the way life is sometimes? You know. You bust open and mostly good stuff comes out, but still sounds like like you're puking. These are 12 millimeter bolts. All right, what you need for the job? 10 millimeter socket with extensions. Looks like 12 millimeter for these. Uh, I've had one chocolate chip cookie. That's also required for the job. Oh, look at that. Ooh, just pop that quality uh, 1997 Corolla mount they don't make these like they used to you know you can't get radiator retention brackets of this high quality anymore well it should just come right out now let me see if I can break it loose you know that's life and then this beast it's a beastie radiator probably not it's just a, a Corolla mmm oh yeah look at that look at that beauty Mmm, that's my favorite. What was that? Oh, that's where the uh, about where the fan is. Look at that. I am going to uh, take a quick break, sing a quick rendition of "We Are the Champions," and we'll we'll get the new radiator primed. There's the old one. Looks like a flat screen TV, except for the giant glob of putty. And then there's 
the new radiator. That new radiator uh, fits just fine. Just a just a quick note. Not that this video will help anybody on the internet. For the two of you who may watch it, I know the people who watch this will probably never own a Corolla this old. But at the bottom, um, right there where my light is, and over here, there are two pegs on the bottom of the radiator and they sit in rubber boots. Now on the bottom of the old radiator, you have that piece right there, that little, uh, I don't want to call it a nipple, but that's kind of what it is, and that those little protrusions. Those protrusions go into the boot. When I pulled the old radiator out, the boot came up with it, so I need to pull it off, reset it, made sure the new ones those sit inside the boots. All right, the brackets have been installed to hold the radiator. It's not quite as snug feeling as the as the old one, it, but it just kind of float in those brackets and putting the hoses on will help that. And now I'm under the car, round here. I don't think those are the words, but for the Counting Crows fans, those are the words tonight. All right, so I'm gonna undo the ballpoint pen and the children's paintbrush over here. And I'm going to uh, take those rubber protectors off the oil infill. All right, oil and lower radiator hoses are now connected. We are ready to connect everything at the top. The only thing I've had a problem with so far, when I got the new radiator out of the box, there was a package. And in the package was for uh, nuts. And I didn't know what the nuts were for. I figured it wasn't for, you know, this, the, this installation. But I was wrong. Those four nuts, sorry. Those four nuts go to the four corners of the fan mounting. I did not know this. I thought the bolts went right into the plastic bushings or something on the uh, old radiator. But you need to put the nuts into these uh, uh, recesses so the fan can mount right there. Now the problem I had are the ones that are on the bottom. I did not put those in after I hooked up all that stuff. And I, the hardest one is up, uh, you have to get at it from the bottom. And it's right there. And there's this big uh, engine holder upper brackety deal there. And I barely got it in. So please, please, please. I would urge you all to put those in beforehand and make sure they're lined up with the screws and that the threads are all working before you mount and hook up everything. Very, very important. Boy, tightening up those fan bolts sure was difficult, but we got it done. So. Remember the advice about that uh, getting those nuts in and making sure they thread well toward the beginning. Now all I got to do, well before filling it up of course, is to reattach the top hose, put the reservoir back in, and attach the reservoir hose to the radiator. Then we'll fill it up. Alright everyone, we are refilled with coolant at least the initial fill and we're getting it up for temperature got the heat on the heat's working uh, I'm gonna get it good and hot and take it for a little drive uh, we went ahead and took it for a nice spin around the around the neighborhood and up the, uh, the highway a little bit to get it good and hot uh, the fan kicks on when it's supposed to uh, the heat works great and everything seems to be working good so in order to evaluate this into the into the official running like a champ status 
we will, uh, I tested it out and I would like to declare this project completed and the Corolla is once again running like a champ. An amateur of some trades, but a master of none.